What is happening guys? Welcome back to another video. If you missed the last one, go check it out. We got this whole spindle and hub set up, all stripped down, ready to go. Got the bearings pressed out. So now we got to get the stuff cleaned up and weld on my new gussets. So they finally showed up. We got the all pro gussets and then I went with the Koyo wheel bearings. Got wheel seals here. Already kind of started sandblasting that uh, spindle there. These mount just kind of like something like that somewhere right up in there so they fit pretty close we're gonna have to clearance them a little bit to get them perfect well close enough to weld so not a big deal let's get the stuff sandblasted we'll finish this spindle up and get this one and then we got to also sandblast the backing plates because we're going to powder coat those as well so let's get to work All right, got the first spindle all sandblasted. So I'm gonna kind of do a superset deal with sandblasting and welding because when I'm sandblasting, I gotta let the compressor catch up and I wanna stitch weld it. So I'm gonna weld a little bit, weld a little bit and then let it cool down and then keep doing that. So I'm gonna kind of go back and forth between sandblasting and welding, but we gotta get this thing fitting right. So let's do a little bit of clearancing, get it to fit nice and snug against this whole run and then we can start welding it together. All right, we got this gusset fully welded in. I welded both the front and the back side. So I think it should be pretty stout. So I just gotta finish up the other spindle and then we can clearance the other gusset, get that welded in place. And then we got a few other things to sandblast so we can start powder coating. Thank you. 
All right, guys, we are ready for some powder coat. So we got all these masked off, masked off the whole inside here and inside where the ball joint goes. And back plates are ready to go. So we are gonna be using the same stone black from Prismatic Powders, the best place to get your powder coat. Definitely go check it out. I'll have the link down in the description. And then we're gonna be using the new Redline gun that we picked up. We've used it once. It worked amazing. I can't wait to try it again. So let's get the oven preheated. We'll get this stuff in the oven. I'll probably have to do this all separate because they're pretty big pieces. And I got the little oven. We'll have to bake it, get it warmed up at 400 degrees, and then we'll pull it out, let it cool down a little bit. We'll spray the powder on, and then we're, we gotta bake this for 12 minutes at 400 degrees once the part reaches 400 degrees. So not 12 minutes overall, we'll throw it in. We'll use an infrared thermometer. Once the actual part hits 400 degrees, then we'll bake for 12 minutes. We'll pull it out and we're done. So I got one of the backing plates in the oven. So what the pre-bake does is it helps burn off any impurities, any you know finger grease or anything on there that would cause issues. So you wanna pre-bake it for you know, 10 or 15 minutes. The part now is 450, so we should be able to pull it out and spray some powder on it and then throw it back in for 12 minutes. All right guys, we are over 400 degrees on the part, so now we're gonna hit it for 12 minutes and we should be good to go.
All right, first spindle is done. Looking super good, really happy with that. So I actually picked up another grate, got it out of the oven in the house because we had like three in there. So we got that, that's gonna save so much time because we gotta let this cool off before we can take it off the rack. So now let's get this other one in, get it preheated and get this thing coated. All right guys, this last spindle is just about done. We got a few more minutes on timer, but I got a couple other little things I wanted to get done. There's those little brake line clamps for the spindles and then that's the transfer case, little skid plate deal. That was all rusty and full of crap. So once that other spindle is done curing, we'll coat these ones and we'll be all done powder coating. There we go guys, we are all done powder coating. This stuff turned out so sweet compared to what it was. Looks brand new and very happy with how this gusset looks. Makes it look a lot better, a lot beefier and should strengthen that whole spindle up quite a bit. So here's the backing plates. It's amazing how good you can make something look that looks so crappy. These were completely full of rust. So super, super stoked. Everything turned out really good. All right guys, getting ready to press these bearings in. One thing I didn't think about before I was powder coating is the surface where the ball joint mounts and where the brake caliper mounts. So I didn't mask those off, those are powder coated, but I wanna get all that powder coating off. You see I already got this one stripped down. This wheel works amazing. This is a polycarbide wheel from Harbor Freight. It's like five bucks. The nice thing about this wheel is it doesn't take any material off of the actual steel. It's not that abrasive, so it doesn't grind into the steel, so it just takes the powder coating off. Leaves you with a nice flat surface and should work pretty good. So I just wanted the caliper and this ball joint to sit metal on metal. When you buy these spindles straight from the factory, straight from brand new, this is a machine surface here and here. So I just wanted to make sure that the powder coating isn't gonna interfere with anything and it may squish down a little bit and kind of work itself loose. You don't want that to happen, so let's hit it with this wheel and then we can get the bearings ready to press into these spindles. All right, we got the powder coating off of these surfaces, so that should be good to go. Now we need to get the bearing in. And there is two sides to this bearing. One has like a metal heat shield looking deal. The other side is just a regular bearing with a seal on it. From my understanding, the metal part goes up, which I'd imagine that would protect the bearing from heat from the brakes. This metal would basically act as a heat shield. The factory bearings that I pulled out didn't have that. I guess you can see, well, there is a little bit of a metal shield there. 
but both sides kind of have that metal shield. So for my research, the metal goes up, rubber goes down. So I am going to grease the outside of the bearing, the inside of this bore here, and then we can get it over to the press, press that bearing in, and then that sir clip will go right into this groove here. And if you guys get your new bearings and see all this play in it, this is 100% normal. This is kind of a weird design bearing. It's kind of two bearings in one outer race. And once you get this thing together, get the bearing in the spindle, get the hub in the spindle, and then that crank down that big nut in the back of the bearing, that'll hold this bearing in place and set the preload and everything of the bearing. So just don't be alarmed if you see a bunch of play in your brand new bearing. All right, that bearing slid in real nice and easy. And a good way to tell if you're all the way pressed in is on top of the bearing, you should be able to see the little groove for the snap ring right along the top of the bearing. So now we'll get this snap ring, get that set in place. And you don't even need to use pliers. You can just start one end of it and then walk it around and get it to clip in. Our next step is to get the seal on this spindle here. So there's two seals. There's a smaller one which goes underneath on the back side, and then this bigger one right here that clamps right over the top of that. So we're gonna grab a brass punch and just very lightly go around and smack this thing on until it's nice and flush. And you also wanna put maybe just a little bit of grease on the inside of this and definitely some grease on the inside of the black rubber part. And then we can press the hub into the spindle but before that you have to make sure you get the dust shield on or you'll be leaving it off so make sure you got the right one these are both marked you can see uh, all right there for right so that's the right side and then there's the r right there for the dust shield so make sure you got the right one and how these go is there's the cutout in the shield right there that goes right back here where the caliper mounts to the spindle. And then obviously make sure the bolt holes line up. It's kind of a dead giveaway. So let's get this seal on and then we get the dust shield on and then we can finally press the hub into the spindle. All right, we got the seal on. One good way to tell that it's completely seated is you'll hear it when you bottom out. It'll sound a lot more solid. I can hear that. Sounds a lot more solid. And if you look down in here, the rubber should be riding on that clip that we put in. So seal is good to go. Now we'll get the dust shield. Put it on just like that. Then I went and picked up some new bolts for it. And I'm also going to put a, just a dab of blue Loctite on these bolts just to make sure they don't back out. All right, dust shields are on. So now we got to get the hub pressed into the bearing. If you guys are like me and don't have a press sleeve kit, you can rent this. This is actually a ball joint installer from AutoZone. There's the part 27310. You can rent these for free and they have a bunch of these sleeves in here. So what we're gonna do is take two of these sleeves, 
this one here, we're gonna support the inner race of the bearing, just like that. So when we press into the bearing, this inner race is supported and you're not putting any more stress on the bearing than you need to. So we're gonna support that. And then with the hub, we're going to take this other sleeve here and we're gonna stick this inside here to press the hub into since there's not really much room to get the press in there. So we're gonna stick this sleeve on. We're gonna put a plate or a cap over the top. I think some of these caps might fit. I'm not sure. Maybe not. So we'll just take a plate, a flat plate, stick that over the top, put that in the press, and then press the, the hub through the bearing. So let's go to the press, get this set up. One other thing you wanna do, grease the inside of the bearing, grease this shaft, and then grease this part as well, because that is where the seal will ride on this hub. All right, this is how I got it set up. So starting from the bottom, I got this one sleeve supporting the hub, and then I got the hub into the spindle. And like I said, with this bigger sleeve up top, that is capturing the inner race of this bearing so it doesn't stress the bearing at all. And then we got the plate and that. So what we're gonna be doing is pressing the spindle down onto the hub, but pressing from the inner race so that Obviously, this is pressing into the inner race. So that's what we want to support. You don't want to support the outer race because then you're putting a ton of stress on that bearing. So let's press it in. Hopefully, it'll go easy enough. All right, that went together very nice. So once you feel a bunch of resistance in the press, you're probably there. But for a visual, you can look down here, you can see the seal is just about contacting the hub. Make sure everything spins nice and smooth. So what I like to do, once you feel that bottoming resistance where you think you got it, give it a couple more little pumps just to make sure because when you're getting really close, this press gets pretty tight and it'll, it'll snag up and then bust and snag and bust and you just wanna make sure this is completely bottomed out because I don't think 200 foot pounds on this rear nut is enough to pull it with how tight this press is. So you wanna do all the work on here, make sure it's bottomed out, and then we'll have to get back here, get that nut on, and then the uh, rear seal as well. All right, it's time to get this rear axle nut on. So before you put the nut on, there's this spacer that goes right down in there. I'm actually gonna grease both sides of that, and then I bought new nuts just because I didn't know if I was gonna screw them up or not, which they are still good, but I got new ones, so we might as well use them. So I'm also gonna grease the threads, a little bit of grease on the threads and grease on this surface here, just so it torques a little bit easier, just so we can make sure we get to the 205 foot pounds. So that's the torque spec for this 205. So we'll get both these in there and then we'll put the whole assembly back in that wheel and tire and see if I can get this to 205 foot pounds by myself.
All right, we got these torqued, but my torque wrench only goes to 150 foot pounds. So I think Devin's gonna come over tomorrow and he's gonna bring his big bad boy torque wrench. We'll torque these down. And then you wanna stake this nut so you can see there's a cutout right here in the thread. So you wanna take a little punch and punch this into that gap, into that cutout, so that nut will never back out. But we gotta do that after we torque it and then we can throw on the rear seals that go right in here. There we go, we got the lock nut locked in there, if you can see that. The little indent into the, the cut out there. And then we got the seal drove in. So use your old bearing, it fits nice and snug inside of that seal. Makes it a lot easier to press that seal into the spindle. So these things are good to go, 100% done. And I also picked up a new set of axles, like I said. I got these for 120 bucks out the door from Napa. They gave me a little bit of discount they're like 60 bucks a piece, so very happy with that. Um, I think I'm going to paint this metal section here, here, and here because they always rust, and I don't want any rust, obviously. So when I go through and paint, probably the next video, paint the drive lines and the front diff, I'll mask these boots off, mask these axles up, and paint these black just so they don't rust. That's a wrap guys, spindles are done, wheel bearings are done. This thing should last another couple hundred thousand miles. And I also got brand new OEM ball joints. And no, a lot of you are gonna comment that I should do ball joints. I know they're a common issue. I did buy a set of brand new OEM ball joints, so we are good to go there. Very excited to get this stuff on the truck. We got a little bit more to paint and then we can bring the four door in the shop, get tearing that thing apart and get this stuff installed. Well, I hope the video helps you out. I know there's a lot of questions about how to change these wheel bearings because honestly, these wheel bearings are a little harder to change than your average wheel bearing. So hope the video helps. And if you guys need those little press sleeves, go to AutoZone, get that ball joint kit. You can rent it for free and you don't have to spend 100 or 150 bucks on a press sleeve kit. So go check that out if you're doing this job. Makes it a lot easier. Well, that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.